You're listening to an audio article by the Common Constitutionalist. Today's article is entitled, Trump, the Lunch Pail Billionaire Has Driven the Left Mad. It was August 1st, 1988. Remember the date? Maybe not, unless you're a common-sense, right-thinking conservative. It was the first day of Rush Limbaugh's nationally syndicated radio talk show, and it was the beginning of the new conservative movement, one that the everyman, like you and me, could be part of. The show took off like a rocket. No one had ever heard such things, particularly from the boring deadpan AM dial. And why did it become an instant and enduring success? First was the shock factor. People, me included, couldn't believe what we were hearing. Can you believe what that Limbaugh guy said on the radio was a common refrain? And second and more importantly, Rush gave voice to what we were thinking. It's just that simple. Finally, there was a guy in the media who actually thought like us, believed what we did, and was not shy about expressing it. In a sea of liberalism from the left and measured politispeak from the right, Limbaugh was a breath of fresh air. For decades, Rush has been enemy number one of the left, and no matter what they've tried to do to get him off the air, he only grew in stature and popularity. Now along comes a New York City businessman who, by luck, hard work, and maybe a little providence, not to mention a piss-poor opponent, has been elected, and the left has a new enemy number one. He, too, is brash, outspoken, and has less of a filter than does Limbaugh. And he, too, is giving not only voice to the conservative movement, but unlike Rush, has the ability to transform that voice into action. Trump is the lunch pail billionaire who became the leader of the free world and it's driven the left bat crap crazy, more than George W. Bush and even more than Rinaldus Magnus. Everything wrong with the nation and the world, according to the left, is somehow the fault of the president. It's like the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Even the latest ruling from the National Football League, a private organization, is Trump's fault. Randall Maurice Jelks, professor of African and African American Studies and History at the University of Kansas, said that the, quote, Move by NFL owners to penalize players who kneel during the national anthem before games is a part of an alarming trend of authoritarianism that flows down from President Donald Trump. Yes, it's all Trump's fault. Never mind that the NFL has had authoritarian rules for decades involving the field, the balls, the uniform, and conduct. Recall that Super Bowl winning quarterback Jim McMahon of the Chicago Bears was fined 5 G's just for donning hand-printed headbands during the Super Bowl in 1986. Yet none of that is bothersome to the radicals of the left, but nearly standing out of respect for the flag and the national anthem is beyond the pale. This is a constitutional crisis. Of course, everything they disagree with is a constitutional crisis. And may I remind the professor that the NFL is awash with leftists from the head office to most of the team owners. But unlike the probably tenured professor, they must earn the gazillion dollars that they make by catering to the people who buy the tickets and watch the games. And unfortunately for radicals like Jelks, the fan base demands a certain amount of respect and American pride. But like most ignorant leftists, Jelks adds that, quote, The owners have forgotten that the U.S. Constitution protects the rights of protest, even the flag itself. There's nothing sacred about the national anthem because the Constitution has a wall between the sacred and secular work of the state, unquote. The Constitution stops at the entrance of the private sector. The football field is the player's workplace, and as such, they have no rights unless granted them by the owners. Could these leftists be any more ill-informed? But this is what happens to otherwise intelligent people when they succumb to the damaging effects of Trump hyper-derangement syndrome, where every waking moment is consumed with blaming the president for every ill until their heads finally simultaneously explode like in the movie The Kingsman. And that may be something to look forward to at the 2020 Democrat National Convention. Thank you for listening.